You know, we're blessed to be here this evening. If you believe that, let me hear you say amen. amen. We're blessed to be here this evening. Today, somebody died. Somewhere along the way in New Zealand, someone was killed in a car accident or somewhere in New Zealand, someone didn't wake up from last night's sleep. There's a hospital bed that could have been yours somewhere here in New Zealand, in Auckland and wherever. Young people, young adults, and the young at heart, God really deserves our best. Pastor Nick was speaking to you early about this book, The Purpose Driven Life. I want to say to you that it is truly one of the most amazing, as he described, instant classics to come along in years. It truly, truly is anointed. It's dripping with meaning. Um, and the same people and gentlemen have written a book also called The Purpose Teen's Life. The Purpose Driven Teen. I'm sorry, The Purpose Driven Teen. And for youth ministry leaders, The Purpose Driven Youth Ministry. And then, of course, for senior pastors, The Purpose Driven Church. Um, all of this series are incredible. So I would encourage you to do that, and um, I would encourage you to follow that. Um, this evening, I just want to thank God for uh, Lindsay, for my wife. Can you say amen? amen? I just want to thank God for her, and let me tell you why. She has been so, so supportive of the Lord using me to go places, and in fact, he's used her. Somebody say amen now. Amen. That's right. Um, she has given of herself while here, and she will continue to do that. As you know, she's open. Those of you who've gotten to know her knows that she loves people. She talks a little bit more than I do, but... Um, <laughs> she'll say, no way, uh, but um, we're grateful to be here with you. This past, the, since Friday, since Thursday, um, when I called Eddie to, pot, to pay? <laughs> Two pies and a Coke, I think that's what he, he says about himself. Um, from Pastor Nick's invitation, you know, I, sent, I emailed him a photo of myself, and he told me, I never, I never heard this phrase before. He said, you don't scruff up too bad, do you? I was like, okay, all right. I, I, got, I, I remember that. I, I still have in the email. You don't scruff up too bad. I said, what in the world is scruff up? <laughs> you know, where I'm coming from, you know, we, you know and praise God, you know, that uh, he's making me stretch. But from his invitation to Pastor Eddie's and Tessa's, uh, Tessa's and the boys and their love and their concern to meeting you all here at the tent, and ministering with you, I have to tell you, this has truly been a remarkable experience for us. Um, we have been blessed and enriched and ennobled because of interacting with you. The music, the praise team, the young people that were ding, 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 ding. <laughs> excellent, excellent. The young ladies who sang the other night, the sisters, Beautiful, the husband and wife team, Anne and her husband, amen, just beautiful, just beautiful. And everybody who's performed and who's offered their service to God, thank you. On tomorrow night, we have something extra special for you again. Um, Sister Lindsay has something prepared for you along with the others that will be a blessing to you on tomorrow night also, all right? So make sure you're here early so the place is packed and so the Holy Ghost is in this spot, all right? Let's make sure of that. Um, one of the things that I want to talk with you about is found in um, Philippians. 
The book of Philippians chapter 2. The book of Philippians chapter 2. I want to thank God also, y'all, for the sound team, the technical team. They've done an outstanding job. Give them a hand clap, everybody. They have been excellent also, and um, I want to thank those guys very much for all that they've done. I want to read this verse to you. Paul, in writing to the Philippians, exhorts them. He says, Um... Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. In verse 4 he says, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. And in verse 5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The theme this week has been chosen. And I believe it's been a very appropriate and very timely theme, a very meaningful theme, chosen by God, chosen to do a wonderful work, chosen uh, to be like Christ, chosen to lead others to Christ, chosen to help people find Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul says to us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I like that verse. I appreciate that verse because it's an exhortation. It's an invitation. It's, it's saying, come on, y'all. We can do this. Come on, you guys. We can achieve this. Come on. Come on, my sisters. We can, we can, we can get there. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He wouldn't ask us to do something if it were not possible for it to happen. He would not place something on us that was impossible or too far to reach. He says, let this mind be in you who was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind of Christ, the mind that was unselfish, the mind that was other-centered, the mind that was focused on God's will, the mind that was at peace, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And I know that when we hear that, sometimes some of the things that pop up in our mind is, oh, Jesus is an impossible standard, Pastor. Jesus never had to deal with premarital sex. Jesus never had to deal with uh, 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 crazy parents. Jesus never had to deal with mixed up, messed up, and mucked up teachers. Jesus never had to deal with anything like that. But as you read Matthew, as you read Mark, and as you read Luke, you do find out, you do see that Jesus had all kind of negative influences around him just like you do. And yet he recognized by the age of 12 that he was chosen for greatness. He recognized by the age of 12 that he was chosen for a specific purpose, that he was chosen to do something special. When he went to the temple to talk with the priest and his mother and father finally found him after not being able to find him, they were wondering what was wrong with him, why he was not where he was supposed to be, where were you, we were concerned, son. He looked at him and said, don't you know? I'm about my father's business. At the age of 12, he understood that he was chosen to do something incredible, something that could never be done by anybody else. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, a mind that was humble, a mind that was all about doing God's will, a mind, now, 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 now for those of you who, who think that there was no psychological issues in Christ's day, for those of you who think that Jesus didn't have to deal with people who had all kind of neurosis and psychosis, yes, he did. There were many people around Jesus who were flat out crazy, just like today. Have you ever talked to somebody and at the end of the conversation you say, ooh, that person's crazy. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. You know, back home we say they got issues. (laughs) That person's crazy. Jesus dealt with some crazy folk. Judas had to be crazy. Think about it, y'all. Judas had to be absolutely off his, out of his mind. He had, to be, he had to be absolutely, ridiculously stupid. Excuse me. 
How in the world, Judas? How many times do you have to hear Jesus say to you, my kingdom is not of this world? My kingdom is a kingdom that's all about freeing you in your spirit and freeing you to serve God, freeing you to become who God created you to be. My kingdom is way beyond, way beyond Judas trying to overthrow the Romans. My kingdom is way beyond that. Because there is a day that's coming, found in Matthew 24, when you're going to see that all of the signs are coming, that, that things are going to happen and tribulation is going to take place. But Judas, before that happens, you got to be ready for the kingdom of God. So if I overthrow the Romans, which I can because, you know, I've got power. If I wanted to overthrow the Romans, all I have to do is blink an eye and there they go. And all I have to do is point a finger. And all I have to do is, is, is like, is, is, is just bop my head and they're gone. That's all I got to do. He said, but Judas, don't you get it? That I got power. But the greatest power I have is to change the hearts of boys and girls, of men and women. That's the greatest power I've got. Oh, I could do the, all of, hey, 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 Judas. Don't you remember, man, that I had some fishes and loaves of bread? I had a few fishes uh, and some loaves of bread. And don't you remember, man, that I fed over 5,000? I fed over 5,000, Judas. I fed over 5,000, Peter. That's right, me, not you, me. I did it. I did it. He says, I did it because all power was given unto me. All power was given unto me. So I did it. And that was just 5,000 women. I mean, 5,000 men, not including the women and the children. So historians estimate it could have been close to 10,000 people that, you, that Jesus fed that day. Now, Judas, don't you understand that I may, not, I may not erase all of the memories that you have of things that took place in the past in your life. Don't you know, Peter, that there's some things that have taken place in your life in the past that I may not, I, I, I may not erase from your mind, but I can give you the power to overcome those things and to live beyond their impact. Oh, don't you know? that the woman with the issue of blood had a constant, now watch this, had a constant flow of problems. She had a constant stream of issues. I think y'all hear me. And I stopped all of them without even trying. Let this mind be in you. We talked about seeking God last night. The night before, we talked about getting the weight off your chest and letting God help you do that, giving God that weight, giving God that thing, and, but, but seeking God and having a heart for God and, and asking God to make your mind and make your heart more like his. And tonight, Paul exhorts us to let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Let the mind that understands that while there are physical laws that are in place, if you jump, you will come down. That's a physical law. That's a law of gravity. But help us, God, 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 Paul is saying, I want to move you beyond being limited by the things that you feel, you see, and you can touch. I want you to be able to enter into the corridors of heaven in your mind and in your spirit so that while they are doing things or saying things to you, while people may perpetrate and talk about you, while people may put you down and slander you and misrepresent you, I want you to understand that just like the three Hebrew boys, you can be cool while there's fire all around. Just like the three Hebrew boys, you got built-in air conditioning. Simply because you got the mind of Christ. Simply because you are seeking God. 
simply because you have found God to be your resting place. You see, some of us are tormented because we keep turning to, 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 to Phil, Dr. Phil. Tormented because we keep turning to Oprah, Dr. Oprah. And Dr. Oprah and Dr. Phil, they have good answers, but they're not the answer. They have good human approaches, but they can't give you peace. They have good human ideas, but they can't restore your joy. Oh, they can talk about the people that hurt them and hurt you in the past, but you cannot turn to them for that inner peace. You know, King Saul made a terrible mistake. King Saul decided that waiting on God and trusting in God was not good enough. The prophet Samuel had been used to choose this man to be the king. And this man, after seeing God's power demonstrated and seeing God and hearing God and feeling God and knowing what God could do, this man turned to witchcraft. Oh, there are many today who turn to witchcraft. Many people, many Adventist Christians call, uh, call Sister Cecilia and she'll read your fortune, your future tell you. Oh, wait, they may not, wait, oh, don't think that witches only ride on brooms, y'all. We have modern day witchcraft. And our minds are being twisted and turned so deeply. Our minds are being prepared for great deception. We're watching Charmed, the TV show. Y'all know what I'm talking about in here. Or Sabrina, the teenage witch. And all of these different shows and television shows that come on and you see people ghosting in and out, people orbing and, 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 and vanishing and reappearing and having power to cast freezing spells. And yet, we don't realize that these things are preparing our minds for the great deception. And Satan is trying to attack your mind, young person. He's trying to take your mind, my brother. He's after your mind, my sister. He's after your mind, my young adult friend and my young at heart friend. So if he can get your mind to accept that these things can happen, he knows he's on his way to completing his work. If he can get you to believe that people can actually orb from one side of the stage to the other. Oh, you say, oh, pastor, come on, that's ridiculous, man. We don't believe that. Come on, Pilate. You know, come on, man. We ain't stupid. Well, I ask you a question. How dumb is it to let your children feast on this stuff day in and day out? What you see, you become. You believe. You buy into, oh, that's not so bad. Just a few cuss words. Oh, just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. It's called creeping compromise. Jesus was between the mountain and the multitude, the Desire of Ages says. Jesus would oftentimes be in the mountains praying. Why? Because you know what, y'all? Prayer is where your power is. He was in the mountains praying, young people, because prayer is where your power is. See, prayer is when you're pouring out your heart to God, when you're saying, Lord, I know you chose me, but I don't quite know what you chose me for. And Lord, I don't even though I don't know what you chose me for. I know what's tempting me. I know what's after me. I know what it, what, what, what's in me that I want to do. And Lord, I know you chose me, but chose me for what? How did I, why me? Why me anyhow? Why you got to choose somebody else? But prayer is where your power is. Prayer is where you go into, 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 the, into the mountain, so to speak, or you go away and you talk to God. And, oh, please, please don't get into this, the thou havest, mightest, truestest, lovest thouest meest. Talk to God. Tell him how you feel. Ask him. You know, I mean, one of the day, one day, one day, one day, somebody had really, 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 really worked me over pretty good. I got a phone call from somebody, 
na 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 what you think well i think no 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 and just on and on and on and on and on and i said to myself boy they crazy but anyway anyway you got to listen you got to listen the pastors know what I'm talking about, and those of you who, who've done counseling therapy, you, you know what I'm talking about. You're listening, and in your mind, you're trying to keep it together. You're trying to keep it together in your head, and you're sitting there, and you're saying, you know, Lord, I feel like smacking the living being. <laughs> Be with me, Jesus. If I hit them right now, I don't think nobody would believe them. <laughs> it would be my word against theirs, Lord. There are no cameras in here. Uh huh. You know. <laughs> but prayer is all about opening up your heart and talking to God straightforward, plainly. To have the mind of Christ means that you've got you've got to have the desire. You got to ask God to help you to pray. See, having this mind doesn't come naturally to us. We were born in sin, and my professor used to say, misshapen in iniquity. Born in sin and shaping in iniquity. And, 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 and it doesn't come natural, but we've got to be willing to have the mind of Christ. We've got to say, Lord, I don't quite know what it is. I don't quite know where I want to go. But Lord, I need your mind. I need you to help me. And you know, there are some times, have you ever been doing the dishes? Yes, I do the dishes, brothers. Uh-huh, I do the dishes because I'm the man. <laughs> right. I tell that sister right there. That's what I'm telling the face. She says, honey, I need you to do the dishes. I say, yeah, I'm the man. I need you to do the dishes. I'm the man, but I do the dishes. And sometimes while I'm doing the dishes, I'll be praying. And I'll say, Lord, you know, am I, am I fulfilling your will? I don't mean about the dishes. <laughs> but I mean, Lord, am I going the way you want me to go? I know that you've called me. But, Lord, is this where you want us to be? Is this what you want us to do? And I've said to the Lord on various occasions and at sundry times, I've said to the Lord, Lord, I don't know if I want to keep doing this. It's pressure filled. It's time. Yes, I love people, but God, I don't know if I, Lord, I don't, Lord, who, Lord, Lord, the problems keep coming. Lord, I mean, one day I was doing the dishes, y'all, and I was washing, I was drying, okay? And, and unknown to me, I had, you know, you have the drying towel and you have a dish in your hand. And I was walking around the house. Lord, I don't. Man, just talking to the Lord. But forgot that I had the dish in my hand. Just caught up in dealing with the fact that, Lord, while I love your people, your people are crazy. <laughs> they got issues. They, that young person got pregnant for the second time in the last three, two years. Uh, her mama is, is back out there. Lord, her daddy is, he, 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 you know, he's messing up. You say mucking up the family. Um, Lord, uh, 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 Lord, it's, it's, it's just, and, 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 and then I don't understand why, you know, I'm just. And the Lord says to me, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you. And I can't explain it. I can't always tell you. And, I, and, I, and you know what? I'm going to say something to you. Some things are an experience. People, sometimes we try to tell you too much. There's some things you've got to experience to understand where a person's coming from. You've got to experience some things. You've got to experience the peace that God gives you. I can't bottle it and wrap it and, 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 and give it to you for Christmas. It's something you got to experience. And it's something you can experience. There are books that are written that help describe it, that help let you know what it can be like. And all of that is true. 
But until you enter into the peace of God, and until you feel the God of peace existing in your heart and in your life, you'll still be full of issues and, and questions and, and things that just nobody can really give you the answer to until you find that resting place in Jesus. But you get there when you, as you ask God to give you this mind. You know, this morning I was watching, we went out to play basketball this morning. <laughs> ah, well, my basketball friends, at, won't y'all stand up? Come on, get up, get up, get up. I'm a, before I call y'all out, get up. I'm asking you this, come on, stand up. Y'all stand up, don't be embarrassed. Y'all know y'all sitting right there? Stand up, stand up, stand up for Jesus. Okay, come on. Where the rest of them at? All my basketball friends. Where's Peter? Is Peter in here? Peter Hibbert, the Hibbert, the Hibbert. Where's Peter? He's hurt. <laughs> well, we were out playing this morning. I want to tell you, and I, I want to let y'all know my girls, the girls were out there balling too, all right? They did well, and the fellas did well too. But I was watching these girls. And I was watching these other young men. Okay, where's Jonathan he don't, and James? I know they're here somewhere, but that's okay. They're kind of scared, all right? But the girls have stood up. See that, brothers? See that, see that, see that girls, stand up. Stand up. I'm, so, oh, I, I'm sorry, June. I saw you too, bro. I saw you too. You did get up. You did get up, Julian. He, he did get up. Y'all can be seated now. Um, they were out there playing. And I was watching the game. And I said to myself, you know, these young people want to play. They want to run down the court. And they're having a good time. And I said to myself, some of them have, seen, have what it seems like to be natural instincts for basketball. Just natural instincts. And I noticed that while we were running and playing, there were some things I would say. Okay, cut, cut. Cut, 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 pass and cut, pass and cut, pass and cut. Some of them caught it, some of them didn't. Some of them did it, some of them tried. Some of them passed the ball and looked at me. Or passed the ball and looked at each other. And I said, you know, when they experience a good play, when they experience what it means to pass the ball and cut, that means that you're creating an opportunity for yourself the person who has the ball, yourself, and the other person who's waiting for the ball on the wing or at the top of the key or in the middle of the lane on the other side of the, uh, on the, other side of the court. Well, you, just like them playing basketball, have to experience the success that, it come, that comes with having the mind of Christ. When you experience that, then you can tell other people, honey, I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but I do know that it will happen. See, when you experience that and when you know that God can deliver you. See, I know what God can do. Why? Because just like they experienced the success and the joy of passing the ball, cutting, and then scoring a basket, I can tell you that I'm not supposed to be here today. I can tell you that we were written off. A mother with seven children raising them by herself, we were not supposed to be here. We were supposed to be on drugs, strung out, locked up, or, 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 or something messed up somewhere. But God did something for us that he'll do for you. And I can't explain to you. I can't bottle it up. I can't tell you that if you drink eight glasses of water a day, you'll have peace. But I can tell you that once you accept Christ, in the inward part. Psalm 51 says, God love the truth in the inward parts. I can tell you that you may have to work through some issues. You may have to face up to some problems. You may have to go and, and deal with some things. But once you settle that I'm going to do the will of God, I'm going to do the will of God. You might be nervous about having to go through the process. But once you come out from the other side, you'll discover that mountain was not that hard to climb. The mountains always look bigger before we begin to climb them. The road always looks longer before we begin to run or walk. 
the road, the, the way always seems harder until we arrive at that point where we do have the mind of Christ and we are understanding that this is what I've got to do. I've got to stay focused on what he wants me to do. I've got to be focused on what he wants me to be. I may not always know where he wants me, where he wants me to go, but I know what he wants me to be. See, there's some things in the word of God that are very clear, y'all. There are some things that are very clear. God does not want us engaging in premarital sex. God does not want us engaging in extramarital affairs. God does not want young people or young adults out there destroying their bodies. That's why Paul said in Romans 12, when I beseech you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice unto God. Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost? See, God wants you to have a life that's full and complete, but he wants you to understand that the laws that he's put in place are not laws to take the fun away. Those laws are there to protect you, to enhance you, to help you grow. See, there's peace in your mind and in your home when you know that by the grace of God, you're doing what he's asked you to do. There's peace. You can go to sleep at night. You can talk to other people and look them in the eyes and not worry about it. Oh, and let me say something else to you. And I want y'all to write this down. When you arrive at that point of peace, and I told you this before, during the week, I told you before, when you arrive at that point of peace and the mind of Christ begins to overtake you, don't expect everybody to be happy for you. Don't expect everybody to rejoice that you recognize that I'm chosen by God. No, I, I, for many are called, but few are chosen. He, Matthew twenty two fourteen. 14. Don't be surprised that there are people who may not always be happy for you. Why do I say that? Because there are people who are always going to remind you of your past. Oh, yes, they are. Oh, yes, they are. They're going to throw up your past. But understand that that person or that agent that's being used by the enemy is trying to, they, they, they don't know it. Sometimes they're not aware of it. They, they, they don't understand it sometimes because this thing is spiritual. This thing is not about how many times you like me or don't like me or how much you like each other. No, this thing is about what you are doing for God and what God is doing in you. That's what this thing is all about. And that's often difficult for some of us to conceive and for some of us to concede that this thing is not about you. It's not about you. It's about God. And it's about what God is doing in you. Now, where you come to play is whether or not you decide to accept the God that created you and you decide that you're going to let him into the crevices of your heart. There are still things that some of us want to hold on to. There's still things that some of us want to hold on to. So when people, now here, write this down, y'all. I mean, you may have heard it before, but I, but I think it's still potent today. When the devil reminds you of your past, remind him of his future. The mind of Christ is what you're after. When he tells you what you used to be, who you gave, who you had sex with, who you smoke dope with, a ganja, or whatever you want to call it, the wacky dacky. Where you were clubbing just a couple of days ago, drinking, whatever. You were chosen by God for this time, for right now, to go forward from the point that you are into God's future for you. See, hell was created for the devil and his angels. Hell was not created for you, my brother. Hell was never intended for you, my sister. It was intended for the devil and his angels. So while you're pursuing the mind of Christ, understand that there are going to be people that sometime along the way who are not going to be interested, not going to be happy, and who, who are going to be because they are miserable in their own lives. Miserable in their own lives. They can't be happy for you. 
About two and a half years ago, those of you who've, um, who purchased the Heritage Missions DVD, uh, about in, in the year 2000, yeah, in the year 2000, 2002 actually, I had a chance to see something that I didn't like. While we were on safari at the Mera Simba Lodge, we had just completed our first game drive. That morning, we had just seen that lion kill I was telling you all about. The one where the lions ripped open their stomach and all of that stuff. Boy, I'm telling you, it was good. But anyway, they... <laughs> well, anyway. We, woo. Never seen that in my life before, right? I mean, that, woo. National Geographic and Discovery Channel. No, you got to be there. We were, while we were there, now watch, watch this. After the safari game drive, we came back. I'm sitting in my room. And um, I look at my brother. My brother looks at me. My brother Les, he says to me, he says, Ron, this has got to stop. I didn't even have to look at him. I said, I know it sure does, Les. He said, man, we got to do something about this. I said, Les, I know we do, man. We got to do something about it, man. I said, well, when I get back home, bro, I'm going to go get me a personal trainer. What we were referring to was we were way, way, way overweight. We were way overweight. I mean, need Jesus overweight. <laughs> overweight. And he said to me, man, yeah, I know. That's, that, that's the deal. I said, Les, we need somebody who's going to keep us accountable with our calorie intake. We're going to need somebody who's going to help us to, you know, our homework is going to be you run two miles before you come and see me. And he'll be able to tell if you ran two miles or I want you to run up these stairs. I want you to run up these stairs so many times. I want you to practice doing this and practice doing that. And I'll be able to know when you come to see me. I want you to get an hour of cardio in every day. Whether that's running on the treadmill, whether that's riding a bike, I don't care if it's 30 minutes running. 20 minutes on the treadmill and 10 minutes somewhere else on one of the elliptical life fitness machines or whatever. But I want you to get that cardio in. I want you to get stronger. I want you to get stronger. And so, 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 so we decided while we were in Kenya, he had just flown over. He was preaching for something else. We were on heritage missions. And he said, look, Ron, we're going to do this when we get back. I said, okay, Les, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. I said to him, I said, now Les, it's going to hurt. He said, I know, man. I said, it's going to hurt bad, bro. He said, but I want it. I said, Les, I want it too. So I come back home, you all, from the mission trip. We complete that part of the mission trip, come back home. And we are, and so I get home on August the 5th or 4th, the 5th, something like that. My wife is home, and we we'll see the kids. And I say, baby, life got to change. She said, well, okay. So I tell her what we're about to do. And she's in full agreement, of course. You know, she wants her man looking good. <laughs> so I go to the gym, and I said, look, I'm a member of Bally's, and I'd like to sign up for personal training. They say to us, it's going to cost X amount of dollars. I say to them, okay, they tell me it's going to cost about 900, I think 900 U.S. dollars at the time, something like that, Lindsay, something like that, 780. I said, woo, that's a lot of money. They said, well, you want, you want to improve, you want to grow, right? I said, man, yeah, I do. But I've been a member for five, you know, you start to negotiate. I've been a member for 10 years. Can you give me a membership break? That is a membership break, okay? And so, <laughs> say to me, all right, I want you to be here tomorrow. We're going to sign you up with Milton Brown. I said, Milton Brown, huh? They said, yeah. I said, okay, I'll be in tomorrow morning. What time can you be here? I said, what time do you need me? We want you here at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. I said, that means I got to get up at 5 a.m. to be there for 6 a.m. They say, yes, sir. So I go to see Milton. I sit down. I talk with Milton. I describe to Milton what I want. He says, what are your goals? Excuse me. <clears throat> he says, what are your goals? His voice is real light. You know, and let me tell you, ladies. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. My wife would tell you Milton is about 6'1", 6'2", and fellas, he might have, what, 2% body fat on him? He might. 
he's cut. He's an Olympic runner. He, he specializes, he runs for the country of Barbados in the 800 meters, the intermediates, the mid, middle, middle distances, right? Something like that. And he, and he says to me, okay, what, what you want to do? I say, I want to lose weight and I want to get in better con- overall conditioning. He says, okay. <laughs> he said, all right, here we go. Let's run a mile. Let's go. Let's go, Milton. So he starts off, and he's talking, and he's just running. <laughs> and it's nice and easy. Just nice and easy. And boy, we're running around that gym. And about the third time around, remember that kid I told y'all I'd beat? Okay, see, what y'all didn't know, what he didn't know is that I had been working out and running with Milton, okay? So that's why I let him talk smack, and he didn't know. <laughs> just let him talk. He didn't know. And I said, to, I said to Milton, I said, okay, so we're running around. By the third time around, I'm tired. I'm like, man, I can't do this, man. I can't do this. I just can't. Man, I'm tired, Milton. I'm whooped. He says, he said, what do you do for a living? <laughs> He's still running. I said, I'm a pastor. He said, oh, you're a pastor, huh? I said, yeah. So you got faith in God, huh? I said, yeah, <gasps> yeah. Yeah, I got faith in God. <laughs> what that got to do with anything? <laughs> That's got to do with anything. He says, oh, well, he said, oh, don't, get, don't, get, don't get defensive. He's just asking. He said, man, that's got to do with anything, man. So we, around, we go around one more time. He says, all right, that's good. I said, now, how many, was that a mile? He said, no, that wasn't a mile. He said, you, to run a mile, you have to run around the gym nine times. I said, how far did I go? He said, six. He said, but that's all you can do right now. That's all you can do. I said, man, that ain't all I can do. I can do more than that. <laughs> he says, no, you can't. No, you can't. You can't do more than that right now. He says, because I want you to run them stairs. And I turn around. I go around the corner, and I'm like, those stairs? Yeah, those stairs right there. <laughs> those stairs are 22. Do, 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 do. I'm like, do, 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 do. he said, I want you to run those five times for me. <laughs> I said, how much time? We, we're supposed to only be here one hour, right? He said, yeah, you're going to do them in two minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm like, your mama. Okay, yeah, I start saying all kind of bad words, all right? Y'all pray for me, all right? I'm trying to let the mind of Christ be in me, all right? I'm saying all kind of bad words in my head. I'm like, man, what did I sign myself up for? Man, why am I doing this? Man, this, so I'm running up the stairs. Okay, that wasn't so bad. All right. Okay, and so I get up the stairs. Whew, what you waiting on? Go, go, go. So, so I have to run back down the stairs, then I have to turn back up and run up the stairs again, go back down the stairs, run up the stairs again, and by this time, y'all, I feel like throwing up. <laughs> I'm getting all nauseated, and I'm getting, like, you know, light I'm like, how you feeling? I'm all right. <laughs> Tell me how you feeling. I'm like, man, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, y'all say the toilet. I got to go, I'm, I'm, man, I'm, I'm done. He said, no, 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 you're not. We got 30 more minutes to go, preacher. 30 more minutes. I said, I never knew one hour could be so long. I never understood that one hour with a personal trainer meant hell. I never knew. So Milton takes me through my routine the first day. He says, okay, come back and see me on, Mo- on Wednesday. It's Monday, come back and see me on Wednesday. So as we go around, you guys, as we go around, Milton is pushing me and pulling me and pushing me and pulling me under the weights and with the running and the cardio and everything else. And he has me losing my mind. I think that I'm going crazy and I'm wondering why am I spending all my money for something so stupid I'm wondering what's going on. And, and, and he said, then, this, then the day comes, y'all. About three and a half to four weeks later after we began. See, my wife don't know. I'm in my head. I'm like, man, I ain't. Man. 
giving up my money for this craziness. But I'm going to do it. I'm, I got to go. I got to go. Milton then says to me, Pastor, today is the day. I said, what you mean today is the day, Milton? Every day been the day. <laughs> Ain't nothing different about today. 24 hours in this day like it was. He said, no, 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 no. Listen, calm down, calm down. He says, I want you to run this mile with me. I said, oh, yeah, I can do that. I can run that mile. No, Pastor, not like this. I said, what you mean not like this? I want you to run this mile. Run this mile like you never ran it before. I said, okay. I said, well, come on. I said, it can't be that bad. I've been doing my miles with Milton. It can't be that bad. <laughs> Boy, we start taking off. And the first lap, he's taking it easy on me. And I don't know it, but he's running. First lap around the building, y'all, is 45 seconds. And I'm like, <sighs> by this time, I'm already sweating one lap. Then the second lap around the building, 40 seconds. I'm like, Milton, what you doing? My voice starts getting high like, what you doing, dude? <laughs> what you doing, Milton? So, now we got seven more laps to go. We just on lap number two. Honey, is he a beast or is he? He is out of his I never met a runner like that in my life, except some of those Kenyan runners, all right, that just be running those hills. And, but anyway, that's another story. Milton, and then he, then, 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 then he says to be around lap number three, Jay, he says, I'm going to start running like the Kenyans now. <laughs> running like the Kenyans? What that mean, Milton? <laughs> man, what you talking about, man? I run like the Kenyans, Milton. So he starts running, and then he says, see, see some, one of the things that some of the Kenyan runners do is when they run, they do like that. They have a, ha, ha. They have a little lean that they do when they run. If you're watching it, they, uh, and what they're doing is they're digging, they're digging, and they're digging. See, I'm digging at lap three. They're digging at like 20, mile number 20. You understand what I'm saying? I'm digging at lap three. So Milton has us going. And so we're getting around. He said, okay, Pastor, every, every lap. Now, he hasn't broken out one sweat yet. I'm drenched on lap three. I'm drenched. That boy is like he got an air condition just rolling with him. He just running. And that brother says, okay, Pastor, every lap from now on out is going to be less than 42 seconds around this building. And I said, Milton, he said, come on, let's go. Pastor, we're going to take it to the next level. I'm running. I'm running. I was like, Milton, I can't do it, Milton. I'm like, and I'm only, I got six more laps to go, y'all. He says, come on, Pastor. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Pastor. Let's go. I said, Milton, I got to throw up. Good. Throw up and keep running. Let's go. Throw up. Keep running. Let's go. Throw up. He said, that's all right. Throw up. We're used to that around here. And I'm like, what kind of building establishment is this? I got other questions for y'all. I got other concerns. I got other issues, all right? I'm wondering what's wrong with y'all around here, all right? What's going on here? I pay my money for this. Now, I'm finding excuses not to run. I'm finding excuses not to run. So we come up and I hang, I hang to lap five. And by this time, y'all, you know, when you get real tired, you start, your body just starts does, doing stuff. My lips started shaking. <laughs> My whole body, stuff just starts flabbering. Up. Stuff just starts flabbering all over. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> you know, and, 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 and your body, your water, your juices start just, <laughs> stuff just starts happening to you, all right? You're just like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so, so we go to lap five. We finish lap five. We're beginning lap six. I got, I got four more laps to go till I get to lap nine. I got a mile. Milton is pulling me. He said, Pastor, we're going to run fast. And all along, the thing that's bothering me is he talking to me. He talking to me while I'm sweating and dying and hurting and crying. And, and you know, he says, come on, Pastor. Come on. He's he just running and he's talking. He's encouraging me. He's, he's helping me. And then he says, you know, when I was a little boy in Barbados, my mother, my grandmother used to go to church too. Man, your grandmother, you can both, you know. And 
mother don't mean nothing to me. Right here, I need Jesus, all right? So, 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 so we're going around, y'all. We're going around. And we come up on lap seven. We come up on lap seven. And I'm, and, and then I said, oh, I know what I'm not doing. I know what's wrong. And boy, that brother pulling. And I said, I got to quote some Bible verses. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I'm quoting Bible verses. I'm like, I'm reaching for anything to give me that energy. I'm reaching for anything to help me believe that I can make it. I'm desperate for any encouragement anywhere to help me. And boy, Milton didn't know it, but he provided the last energy I needed. Oh, he provided it and praise God for him. To this day, I hate him, but praise God for him anyhow. He said to me, he, while we were running around like lap seven, he says, Pastor. I'm like, oh. <laughs> Pastor. Uh. He said, you believe in God, right? Huh? 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 Uh. He says, then let me ask you a question. Where's your faith? I look at him. Where's my faith? He says, yeah, if you believed in God, then how come you being so negative running around this track? How come you don't believe in yourself if you believe in God? I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you won't talk like, talk about my God? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> I started running. And boy, he said, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Then he started saying something like, you're a hypocrite. You don't love the Lord. You're a hypocrite. I'm like, ah, ah. I'm like, ah, ah, ah. And we just don't laugh eight. <laughs> so by the time we get done, my brothers and sisters, by the time we get done, I'm a blubbering, stuttering idiot. <laughs> and by the time we get done, he says to me, Pastor, guess how fast that man was? I'm like, I'm like, how fast? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, where's, where's my water? Where's, I don't care how fast it was, all right? He says, Pastor, that mile was in six minutes and like 41 seconds, Pastor. That's the fastest. He said, for somebody who's been with me the last four weeks, oh, Pastor, that's awesome. For somebody as old as you are? <laughs> I had to laugh on that one myself. I can't touch him, all right? So he can say whatever he want to say, all right? He can say whatever. He... You see, <laughs> I learned something again. I learned that when we are pursuing the mind of Christ, we're pursuing God, and we recognize that God chose us. You see, I chose Milton because of his credentials. And he chose me, he said, because he said as a trainer, personal trainer, he has the right of refusal. He didn't have to agree. He didn't have to choose me. He said, but he chose me because he saw the potential. Am I done? No, I'm still a work in progress. But that was over 30 something pounds ago. I started with Milton at 235 pounds. God be praised that now he, by his grace, I'm down close to 200 now. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? That when you are pursuing the mind of Christ and God, you recognize that God chose you, Richard, when you recognize that God chose you, you understand that there are some things that are going to come off. 
there's some things, some weight you're going to drop. It won't be easy. It won't be pretty. It won't be cute. It won't be popular. You may never make it into the headlines of the New Zealand Herald, but, but, but God is watching you. There's some things that you're going to have to leave behind. See, there's some sacrifices that are going to have to be made because you're pursuing the mind of Christ, young people. Hear me and hear me well. Who your friends are will determine who you are. But that's why if you're pursuing the mind of Christ, not that you leave this present world, but what happens is you decide because of your new value system, because your priorities have been flipped, Because your priorities and your decision making and your desires have been flipped. The script has been flipped. It was upside down and now it's right side up. You now recognize that God has chosen you and you're pursuing God. Because you recognize he's always pursued you. Milton didn't have to choose me. He, he said I had 10, 15 other people I could have chosen. He said, but I chose you. He said, because I saw the potential. God chose you because he sees your potential. He pursues you because he believes in your ability. He is the hound of heaven, as one writer says, because he understands what you have to offer. Oh, it may not be cute sometimes. It may hurt. And yeah, it may mean you have to reorient yourself and change some things, change some of the places that you go, change some of the people you hang out with, change some of the material that you read. You might have to flip the script on some of the channels that you watch, some of the radio stations that you listen to, some of the music that you purchase, some of the DVDs that you buy, but you've got to flip the script. Why? Because God has chosen you and because you recognize that this holy God has a holy purpose for you. Oh, young people. That means that where you once lied, you've got to tell the truth. That means that God is going to give you the power to go through the pain that transformation comes with. You see, just like Milton helped me to believe in myself, God constantly sends people your way through music, through wholesome Christian music, through preachers, through counselors. He's always saying to a happy, to a married couple, he's always saying to you, I believe in you and I need you to be a light. He says to a young person who once had a past of sex and, and violence, I need you to be a part of my new gang now. I don't want you running with the Bloods and the Crips. I don't want you with them. I want you as a part of my team now because I've got more for you. He wants you to understand that you can expand your horizons, young people. Yeah, you got to run. It requires effort. But the thing about it, you all, is that Milton ran with me every step of that mile. He ran with me every step of that mile. And if Milton Brown could run with me, then my Lord, the God that we serve is going to run with you every step of the way. He's with you. But you've got to know that you're chosen. You've got to believe that you're chosen. There were times when running, I stumbled, I fell. There were times when I was exhausted and I just didn't feel like I could make it. And sometimes when I kind of slowed down, I kind of, I kind of slowed down and he would tell me, Milton would say, okay, he would say, you can slow down a little bit, but don't stop. If you got to put your hands on your head so you can catch your air, always do that, but keep moving forward. That's what God is saying to you tonight. <clears throat> That's what he's been saying for this whole week. I love you. Nothing's going to change about that. I want you to love yourself. I don't want you to love everything that's happened to you, but I want you to love the person that I'm making you to be, the person that I'm transforming you into. Yeah, it means you're gonna lose some weight. It didn't, the weight didn't get there overnight and it's not gonna get off you overnight. It took time to gain the weight, it's gonna take time to lose the weight. No miracle diets here, 
No super, super slim fast and no E diets are going to do it. It's going to be me and you. You and me. Yeah. So every man's battle may not be sexual immorality. Every woman's battle may not be fornication. Every teen's battle may not be parents and may not be drugs. It may not be, but it's something. It may not be yours or mine, but whatever it is, it's something. Tonight is our last night, and then tomorrow night, and then Sabbath, we, you know, then we leave. And I've said it before, and I'm not trying to sound like a broken commercial, but I mean it with all my heart. <clears throat> God gives us these type of meetings so that we're encouraged to go further. He brings these type of events together. He chose me through Pastor Nick, through all of the other processes. He didn't have to move on him to choose me. He, but, but God did that. I was preparing for all my basketball leagues and all of my relationship retreats and all of the other ministries that are under my umbrella that I'm running with and I'm taking care of, that God has laid on me. But, but when he chose me, I asked Lindsay, what do you think? She said, let's go. God wants us to do this, Ron. I feel in my heart he wants us to do this. I said, let's go. And somebody this week has heard something that has made you decide that I've got to, I got to recognize God's choosing me. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. There's a weight, <clears throat> there's some weight you've got to drop. There's a little bit too much around the hips. There's too much around the midsection. There's something we got to lose as we run and as we pursue the mind of Christ. While we pursue that mind, it'll make us better fathers. While we pursue the mind of Christ, it'll make us better mothers and wives. While we truly pursue the mind of Christ because we recognize that we've been chosen by him, it'll make us better parents, it'll make us better youth, it'll make us better brothers and sisters. There's something about following, letting the mind of Christ be in us that will make us better than when we first came to him. Will the way be smooth all the time? No. But it'll be worth it. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you'll see where he brought you from. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. And I want this, this appeal is for my teenagers this evening. Teenagers, I don't care what nationality, I don't care if you're Maori or you are Samo, Sam, um, Samo, um, Samoan or Tungan or if you're Kiwi, I don't care if you're Aussie, it doesn't matter. Stay with me. You recognize that there's some weight you've got to drop and that you've got to pursue the mind of Christ. I just want you to raise your hand where you are. This is for my teenagers. Just raise your hand. God sees you. Praise his name. Raise your hand, young people in the back. Raise your hand. God sees you. I gotta pursue God. I gotta have the mind of Christ. Others may not understand it. They may not even be interested. But I'm making this decision for me and me alone. You see, your friends can't give you heaven. Uh-uh. They can't give you heaven. Your hands are raised, young people. My teenagers this evening. Teenagers. Teenagers, come on. Your hands are raised. God sees you. Now, this call is open to anybody else and everybody else. Keep your hands up. Your, your palms are stretched up because you're receiving God right now. Your hands are up, your palms are open. Anybody in here right now, you want to you wanna run 
You want to pursue the mind of Christ because he chose you. He chose you. Yes, Lord. I want to, Lord, lose the drugs. I want to let the premarital sex go, Lord. I want to stop the lying, Lord. I want my life to be completely yours. You chose me. Even though I don't believe in myself and I don't quite understand where I'm going to go from here, I want the mind of Christ. Thank you. Thank you. Repeat after me, everybody. Thank you, Lord, for, for choosing me. I'm not worthy, but you chose me. Before I was born, you chose me. Thank you. Blessings, everybody. God bless you. Thank you for choosing us, Lord. Thank you for letting us understand, helping us see, Lord, that the mind of Christ, a mind that was humble, a mind, Lord, that was capable of, of love beyond measure, a mind, my God, that you've offered to give to us. We need you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name it is that we pray. Amen. Lastly, everyone, just a quick word. Tomorrow, eat tonight. I want to thank you all. Davina, are you over there? Is she over there? Okay, Davina's there. I want to thank you all for helping us. We're down to the last few uh, DVDs. But just know that your purchasing and your contributions and your donations for the DVD helps us with taking two young people on heritage missions this year. They do. I want you to also know that we had about 13 to 15 youth and young adults come forward last night who want to be a part of Heritage Missions for this year. Can you say amen, everybody? Amen. From New Zealand, from New Zealand. We're going to work it out. So I'm going to need to talk with Brother Luke and a few others and work out some things. And um, along with Pastors Nick and um, Eddie, we, you know, we're going to make it happen for these young people. But this evening, Davina is over here on my left, on your right. Please help us, you all. The $32 helps us with taking young people on heritage missions, all right? So Davina um, with, and Lindsay over there, please help us. Um, those of you who came forward for heritage missions last night, we need you again one more night tonight. We need you to come forward. Meet with my wife down on my left, your right. I'm going to be praying with other people. Come see my wife, um, Lisa Harris.